welcome to the 2013 Sabre 32 QSIK. Starting with your bumper here, if you just pull that end cap off, reach in a little bit, we got your sewer hose in here. So just take note of those two ears and the adapter, that's how we'd be hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself, once it's fully extended, is about 20 feet long. We're just storing it in the back bumper here to help keep any sort of stench out of the trailer and just keep things that little bit cleaner. Right? Pressing that bumper cap back into place and just kind of press the center there, just kind of make sure it's fully seated. In this corner, as well as the other corner of the back of the trailer here, you've got these stabilizer jacks. So what they'll do is they'll just come down, contact the ground, give them another turn or so just to firm them up, and they'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you have in the back of the unit here. Right. Making our way down, you can see you've got your little box here that just kind of pops on open. All right. You've got your shore cord, so it has that little metal tab in the bottom left there. It's going to line up with that tab there. Just kind of press it in, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place there, and then you get that threaded collar in the back there to thread it down and really lock it into place. Following the cord back, you can see you've got a 50 amp end at the end of it here. So not all campsites will have that, some will, not all. So we do provide you with a 50 amp adapter so that you can take that down to a standard 30 amp plug-in, which most campsites will have. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We also provide you with a 15 amp adapter so you can take that 30 down to a 15 to plug into your standard household outlet to charge your batteries or run your fridge. Right here we've got your sewer outlet. All right, so you just get this cap here, just turn it, kind of press it in and turn it, pop it off. And on the left here, you've got a black valve on the right, you've got another black valve there. So as labeled up here, these are both gray tanks. So your gray tank number three is uh, for your outside kitchen. Your gray tank number two is for your inside kitchen. Up front, we'll go to gray tank number one and we'll also have a black tank up there. Those will be your bathroom sinks as well as your toilets. Right. So when it's coming to dumping, when it comes time to dumping your tanks, you're going to want to do these two last. You're just going to be hooking up your hose the same way, presses onto there, open up the valves and let it drain out. We'll come up front to the other set of valves here. So right up front here on the left, we've got a gray valve right in the back. And this is your black. So it is labeled up here, right? So your wastewater, sewer connection, and then up top of this guy here, we've got it labeled gray tank one, right? So same idea, you're just gonna press it in, turn it, pop it off, and then you just got park, go park one. Park, go park one. the same style of connection that you had in the back there where you're just gonna be taking your hose, attach it onto there. You're gonna wanna do your black tank first because your black tank is filled from your toilet, so it's gonna be your dirtiest water. You'll let that drain out first, and then you'll come and do the gray, and then the other two grays afterwards just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Once you're done, that connection is just kinda pressing back into place, it locks in. Straight up from there, we've got your exhaust for your furnace here, so you just want to make sure nothing's blocking that. If you're ever running your furnace, it does get hot. Now we've got the hot water tank here, so you just get that little keyway, just line that up, and you can kind of press it in and pop it open eventually. There we go. All right, so all of your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before you ever turn it on, though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know that hot water tank is full. It's safe to be fired up and you're not going to damage anything by doing so. Two bottom pins there. Just line those up with the holes. Press it into place and lock it back down. Okay. Storage compartment here. So you just put those two latches there. Open her up. And on the right side you can see we've got your entire water system. So you just get a little light up top there. In the back left here, pop that cap off. We've got your fresh water tank fill. So you'll just take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. Right beside it, we've got your city water connection. So your same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. On the right side here, you've got a couple of GFI protected outlets. Below that is a cable and satellite inlet. Right here, we've got an antifreeze inlet. So when it comes time to winterize the unit, you're just gonna connect the hose to that and stick the other end of your hose into your uh, antifreeze jug. And then on the top right here, you're just going to be taking normal, flipping it up to winterize, and that'll allow your tank or your pump to draw out of your antifreeze tank. And then in the top left here, you've got your bypass valve for your water heater, so that'll just go up to bypass and that'll bypass your tank. Okay. The black tank flush here, so you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically that's going to be some debris hanging between your probes inside of the unit. So what you can do is just pop that cap off, take your water hose and stick it into there. Open up your black valve and turn on that water and that'll just kind of flush out that tank for you, getting rid of any sort of debris that might be causing your issue. 
And then in here you've also got your outside shower, hot and cold water, of course, the standard head. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off before he gets inside. And then this bottom plug here, if you just pull that up, throw it off to the side, you can kind of run all of your water hoses up through the bottom there so that you're not having to leave this compartment open. Beside that, you can see you've got your water hose here, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. So your 30 amp end into there, 15 into your house. This big box right here is just your smart totes. We do have that in here for you. And this little wrench is for turning out your uh, water filter, which is just around the corner there. I'm not too sure if you can see it from this side, but we'll get it from the other. Okay, so this compartment here doesn't have any locks because you cannot lock your propane compartments. Open it up and get access to one of your propane tanks here. So just standard barbecue style nozzle on the top. You're just gonna open it to open it up and that's that. Your changeover is on the other side. Currently I've got it set to run off of the other tank, so we'll just leave this closed for now. To the front of the units, you get these two switches here. So that front cap lighting will do all of your orange lights across the front of the unit. The dock lighting will do your little lights across the front of your tank vent here. So there's your dock light and there's your front scares. Landing light controls, of course, retract to go down, extend to go up. This right here is just a vent for your battery, so you don't want to be blocking that off. You want to be able to let that vent, especially if you're plugged in and charging. Open up the compartment here and you just get this little T-latch to hold it open. And then inside, on the right side here, you've got access to your battery. So this guy just pops on up. Inside of that black box is your battery. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back, this battery is charging for you. Up on the wall, that little red box is your battery disconnect switch. So with it up to the left there, that's it turned on, bring it down, and that's your battery disconnected from the system. Okay. Also kind of right underneath my arm here, you just lift up this tab, you get access to your spare tire. Also right up top here, just a little light. So we have another non-lockable compartment here. Open that up, there's your propane tank. So this is where we have your changeover. So you can see up top here, you get that little green dot. That's just letting you know which tank you're drawing off of. Follow that hose over to this tank here. So we'll open that up and we'll draw off of this guy. Let that run. Now for your propane appliances to stop working, obviously this propane tank's gone dead. So you just take that changeover, flip it to the other side, and that's that. Okay. Running off of this guy right now though. Other end of your storage compartment here. All right. So there you can see that little white guy there. That's your water filter. Your wrench will slide onto there and you can turn that off. That's just a little access panel to your, uh, that little white box here is an access panel to your, um, what's it called now, a vacuum cleaner just in the back there. So this is just an auxiliary cord. So if you're looking to plug your phone in, play music, you got a TV out right here as well. This power outlet is actually going to a subwoofer previously installed by the previous owner. So that's just kind of hidden underneath your steps there. You got another power outlet there for it. So if you're looking for a TV out here, you can do so. You've got your antenna outlet as well as a 12 volt outlet down here. The stereo here, pretty straightforward, very similar to the one that you've got inside. So power button will turn it on. And then of course, you've got your FM your volume controller right here. So this stereo is just hooked up to speaker set C, which is your outside set of speakers kind of right above our storage compartment here. And that's that. If you try to turn on A and B, it's not doing anything, all right? Pretty straightforward mode to get through all of your modes. So you got your auxiliaries there, as well as your AV, which is connected to the back of the unit, Bluetooth connecting to your phone, and then back to FM. You can just hit AM, FM to go through all of your bands, get into AM, then into your three FMs, and that's pretty well it. All right. USB is just charging, SD card for data transfer, and that's about it. All right. Another GFI protected outlet here. Right. In the slide, this little black box here is a vent for your stove. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you just want to make sure that this flap here is opened up so that the fan you've got inside can evacuate those fumes. Okay. Two vents here, just vents for your fridge, nothing back there for you to worry about. And then in the back here, you've got your outside kitchen, so just pops on open. Okay. So the light switch over on the left here turns on the light up top, storage right across the top here. So microwave here, it's pretty standard, just like home. 
hot and cold water at your sink with the mobile head. It does quick connect as well if you wanted to take that out. All right, and then right here, if we just open up this compartment, slide this guy out, we get your stove here. Open it up, then you get the wings on either side, so just fold those down. And then we can just grab our propane hose here. So just the quick connect pulls back, undoes itself. Right underneath here, you've got your propane valve. So you do have that little valve on the side there. So with that valve closed, you can operate your quick connect. With that valve open, you cannot. So it's just an added safety. So we'll close that off, then you can push it back and attach our hose, open up the flow of propane. And then we'll just take this guy up through the little bottom hole here. Like that. Right. Come up around the back then. And just do that collar up. Lock it into place. And then just grab a lighter, turn it up to light. And as soon as it clears the air out of that line, she'll fire right up. There we go. All right. So once we're done, we're just turning it to off, bringing our wings in, folding it down. Pulling off a propane hose, closing off that valve, pulling it out, and I just like to attach the propane hose to itself, just ensures that absolutely nothing's getting in there on you. Let's throw it back away, and that's that. A little bit of storage here, so you do have a little cubby there. This guy here just slides on out, a little bit of more storage, same thing right here. A little bit more storage on the side again, and then of course, just the outside fridge. Okay. So right below our outside kitchen, we have a little storage compartment. You pop that open, you can see we've got your overrides for your slides, as well as the jacks for running all of your stabilizers. So now we'll make our way on inside. Just get your little lend a hand handle here. So just up 90 degrees, it falls into place. Grab that bar and pull your steps out. And flip that bottom one over. And then as we open up the door, you can see you got the same T-latch back here that you had on that front storage compartment. So we'll just hold that open for us. And then we can make our way inside. So you see right inside the entrance to your left, we've got your fire extinguisher there. So standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Then up on the wall, these four light switches here. So on the left, you get your pendant light there. On the left, right, you got your interior light. Uh, right, left, you got your entrance light. And all the way on the right, you have your hallway light. Okay. This little compartment here, if you open that up, you get two 12 volt outlets, as well as a couple power outlets. So they have this dubbed as the cell phone charging station. A little bit of storage up here. You can see you've got your keys here as well. Over on the side of that, we've got your thermostat, so just press that power button there in the bottom, turns it on, it'll start from fan speed. So when it comes to fan speed, I'm going to recommend you just leave it on auto, unless of course you're looking to just move some air. If you're looking to just move some air, you can select your high or low fan, it'll use one of those, and just move air. If you're looking to actually cool the unit or heat it, you're going to want to leave that on auto. Just hit mode again, it'll come into cool, select our temperature with the plus minus there, and she'll fire up that air conditioner. So once we get to the air conditioner, I'll kind of explain the two different options you have with it. But basically there's a louver that you can have closed, in which case it'll be forcing all of its air through all of our roof denting there, all the ducting. Okay. Or you can have it just opened up and it'll dump all of its air into the living room, just kind of quick cooling it off as quick as possible. So when you first get out to your campsite, you'll want that louver open, cool off the living room as quickly as you can, then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. So after cooling, if you just hit mode again, it'll come into furnace, it'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. Temp selection again, just with the arrows there. And the furnace is moving its air through a bunch of little ports that you'll see up on little walls or the floor registers. Now with it being a used unit, you shouldn't have to deal with the used or the new furnace smell too much. It should just kind of go easy for you. And after furnace, you just hit mode again. It'll come back to on off and just kind of cycle back around. So straight down here by your main step there, you just pop that right side, pop on open for you. 
can see down the right side, we've got all of your breakers. So if a breaker ever breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And in the bottom there, we've got all of your fuses. If a fuse were to ever pop, that little red light beside it will go off, letting, it, letting you know exactly which one went. These two resettable fuses here are for your slide outs. So if you ever have an issue with one of your slide outs, just press that reset there and that should do it for you. All right. So around the corner here, you just get storage up top, storage down below, and the center one has your monitor panel as well as all of your switches. So starting from the left side here, you've got your awnings, press and hold out, and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, you'll see a little flap at the end come down, and then you'll be able to see the black of the tube, sorry, the gray of the tube. And there we go. Once you see that, you're going to want to stop. If you were to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case it'll be holding water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. Now, if it were to start raining, it's going to be holding water anyways. So what you can do is you can just grab either arm, front or rear, and slide it in. And then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you a bit more shade, you can do the same thing with the front arm there. Before you ever bring it back in though, you just want to make sure that those knobs are loosened off and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. And then we'll just come on inside, press and hold it in. And that awning will come back in. Again, we're just watching, making sure that our fabric is over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind is it is just a big wind catch, so if you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in anyways. Again, just so that you're not running the risk of bending anything. Alright. So in the center here, we've got your slide out switch. Press and hold out, and the slide will make its way out. I believe this one is actually the very far back slide. Alright, so once that slide's fully extended, you'll just hear some clicks from the motors. those clicks there. Right. Then on the right you've got your other slide rooms. This will be the main living room here. Press and hold out makes its way out. One thing to keep in mind is that end of the slide. If that door is open it will take that handle right off so just keep that in mind. Make sure that door is closed. So along the floor here now you can see the two heat registers for your furnace. Same thing, you get the clicks once it's fully extended. Alright, so right here on the left you got that water pump switch, turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. And then your water heater controls here, so you got gas on the left, turn that switch on, that little light in the center there will come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light goes out, the ignition sequence is started, and it'll try that three times. If after the third try that water heater hasn't fired up, that light's going to come on and it's going to stay on, letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, you'll be going out using that reset button that we've shown you. So stood right here, you can hear the couple of clicks of the igniter. Now you can hear the whir of the flame. We know that that guy's good. Beside that's your electric switch. So turn that on, turns on your water heater with electricity, and that's that. All right. So DS means door side. So that's going to be this side of the unit, of course. Turn that light on. You get a little scare light up front of the unit turns on. ODS is opposite of door side, so that was by the back there near our cable hookup. I don't know if you saw that outside, but that turns that light on. The patio light's going to be your porch light out front, and step light is a little orange light at your steps. On the top here, you've got your monitor system. So on the far left, you've got batteries. You can see we're currently, we were C for charging. So because we're plugged in right now, we should be charging. There we go. All right. Then for your fresh tanks, as you fill that up, it'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black. Black one is actually hooked up. Black two is not actually hooked up in this unit. It's just there. Uh, gray one was your bathroom, I believe, and gray two was your kitchens. Right. So on the left, you got your fan control. So turn that switch on. Turns on the fan for your power, for your ceiling fan there. Then in the center you've got your reversal, so you can either lift your air or push it down. And then on the far top there you've got speed. Right. Once you're done, just turn it back off, and that's that. 
So this pouch here just contains all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, anything like that for the unit. It's going to be right in that pouch there. So down on the floor here, this little white box is a propane detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off. So beside your propane detector, you've got your fireplace. So just pop this guy open, power switch up on the top there, turns it on. Then you got your power button there to really turn it on. Right. That little flame in the center left there, just kind of chooses your flame color. So it'll go down and back up and back down again, just kind of cycles back through. On the left, you've got that small flame. On the right, you got the big flame. It's just letting you know what your temperature level you're at there. And then once you're done, just turn it back off. Above that, we've got your inside stereo. It's the power button on the top left there, turn it on. Really the exact same as what you had outside. However, speaker set C is blank. Speaker set B was also blank. And speaker set A is uh, actually your 5.1 sound system here. So you can see you've got your front left, your front right, your center channel, and then you've got your two back speakers back there. And then your point one being the subwoofer, which is actually right underneath this step here with this kind of kick panel just being not solid so your sound passes through All right. and we'll just hit mode to cycle through all of our modes again come into am fm come on there we go seven winnipeg rock All right. station volume in the bottom left here bluetooth if you want to connect to your phone is just right there and then you get all of your controls for it as well and pretty straightforward yeah. above that we got your tv here so your remotes just right in here remote for your fireplace remote for the tv and owner's manual for your microwave in the left there tv does pull out so just grab it pull it on out and it does swivel as well so right in the back we've got your access to your antenna outlet as well as your cable and satellite outlet so that little green button right there just turn that on and off that's your booster for your antenna signal so if you're having trouble with signal just turn that on to clear it up all right just pushing it back in clicks in and that's that into the slide out the slide switch here does the two above the couch a little bit of storage above it as well and for the couch, it does actually fold out. So you can just take these two cushions, throw them off to the side, grab the back and flip it over. Bring these legs out, fold it out. And then inside of this bag here is a blow up mattress that would just lay out across and that's that. Once you're done, you're just folding the foot back over, bring the legs back in and flip them back around. And there you go. <clears throat> All right, so the light in the center here just has the push button on the left there. <clears throat> push button on the front there. Now with this dinette, I don't know if you've seen it before, but you do actually have to have it down for this slide to come in. So you will be setting this up. All right, we're just gonna be taking that table, bringing it up, taking our legs and stuffing them into their stands. And then we're lining up the table with it. And there's your dinette. Alright. So while it was down, if you just take that cushion, that cushion, and the back cushion, fill in the center, it creates another bed. A little bit of storage on either side of it. So this is of course your entire vacuum setup. The plug in for that being at your first step at your entrance there. A little bit more storage there. Now the kitchen slide out, it's controls just right here. So press and hold out, that slide will make its way out. This slide is different from the other two. Once it is fully extended, it'll just stop itself. This light switch here turns on your light inside of your pantry. Just in the top there. 
And then right above my head here, we've got our air conditioner. So this is just that louver I was talking about. That's it closed using all of the ducting. Open it up and it dumps into the living room. All right. I am six foot three and I'm on my tippy toes to do that. So you might want a stool. Your fridge here, power button on the left there turns it on. On the right there, that's kind of your mode selection. So with a button in, is gonna run off of auto. Auto is first gonna be using AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. And if you're dry camping and want it to run solely off of gas, just have that button come out and it'll run just on gas. Freezer section here and your fridge. So if it ever doesn't fire up on gas, you'll just get that little check light there letting you know it hasn't. At that point, you'll just be turning it off and back on to reset it. Simple as that. In your kitchen, you just get this little light up on the top there. A little bit of storage, another light over here. Another microwave, again, just like home. Light switch as well as your fan. So this is that fan that you want turned on whenever you're using your stove so you can evacuate your fumes. The bifold cover is just gonna lift up, fold it in half, stick it to the back and it falls into place. Turn your knob, turn it over to light, and you have a sparker. And as it clears all the air out of the lines, she'll fire right up. I will look into that right away here then. Alright, I'll look into that in a sec here. For your stove, you're just going to turn that knob over to pilot, press and hold. This one you do need the layer for. So pressing and holding that knob right in the back. And again, just as it clears the air out of the line. So there we go there. Once you get it going, you just want to hold that knob in for another couple of seconds, and then you can release and it'll hold itself. Then you're just going to turn up to your desired temperature, and she fires right up. Once we're done, turn it back down to pilot light, and it'll hold just the pilot light for you. However, if you're leaving the trailer or going traveling for a while, you just want to make sure that guy's right off. A little bit of storage below your sink. Just right here. Just being mindful of your water lines and your drains. You obviously don't want to be breaking those. The four drawers down the side here, bunch of storage. All right. Pull up more storage here. Okay, and uh, I guess we can go through the bunk room now. Of course, just more storage here. So in the back bunk room here, light switch to straight up on the entrance here. A little bit of storage back there. All right, blinds throughout the unit are pretty well just sit where you leave them. All right. Storage all across here, and then your ladder just kind of up and out. There you go. Inside of this cabinet here, up in the top, you've got a cable and satellite outlet as well as a power outlet. So if you can find a TV small enough to fit in there, you can do so. A little bit more power, down, sorry, heat down there. All the storage. Right down the side as well. And then in the back here, the two lights and the bunk. So just have the travel latches there, just undo those. And slide around down. And that's that. For the emergency exit here, you're just pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen. That handle up, that handle up. Throw it outside and hop on out. For travel, I do recommend that this guy stays up. Just that it's not hopping around the whole time. Then this guy here, if you just pull in the center, comes out, got a couple of cup holders in there, armrest. And then if you just grab the back, sorry, grab the front, fold it down. And then you get this cushion in the back here as well. And 
fold it on down, stuff in that back section, and you have another bed there. Once you're done, I'm just going to pull that cushion out, or I guess we'll just grab the bottom, and fold it up, there you go. Another blind on the door, some privacy. And then up towards the front. Get another slide out here, so just press and hold out. The bedroom slide will make its way out. So just inside the entrance, we got your light switch here. The same slide out as you had in the back, it'll click. There you go. So this thermostat right here is just a dummy thermostat right now. It isn't actually hooked up. It is there for if you chose to go to a secondary AC, it would run this air conditioner. Light in the front there. All the closet space here. The light switch up top. And then on the right side of this here, we've got a washer and dryer hookup. So of course, don't have the washer and dryer installed, but you are pre, pre, pre plumbed for it. And above the head of the bed, you got a couple more lights here. Center push buttons there. Same thing on the other side. And at the foot of your bed, you got a couple of drawers here. So just built in, as well as the four drawers there. Same emergency exit as the back, pull the red tab, handles in, hop out. And then in the bathroom, so you get your light switch up on the wall there, the one on the right does your light, the one on the left is for your roof vent, so just turn that knob to open it up, and she turns on, okay, turn it back off, whatever. Speed control on the left here, just got three, two, one, and off. Then you also got your fuse there, so if it ever stops working, that's the first thing you're going to check. GFR protected outlet up on the wall here, so test, reset, so if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's a good thing to come and check. Remove medicine cabinet storage. And then in the shower, you just get your standard head, hose, and that's that. For your toilet, the flusher's on the right, get a little bit of storage beside that as well. Sink cover for the bathroom here, and of course hot and cold water. A little bit more storage below it, and that's that. All right. So if you got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.